Today we're going to build a Raspberry Pi bird feeder camera that sends wildlife alerts and pictures to your cell phone and to a website. In this video I'll be using an outdoor waterproof junction box, an old Raspberry Pi 4 that I just had sitting around, a Articam 8 megapixel camera, as well as a 5 volt DC converter to power the Raspberry Pi, as well as these breather plugs to prevent condensation, a 12 volt 5 amp power supply for outdoors, a male DC power connector that fits into this DC barrel jack for the 5 volt power to the Raspberry Pi, a normally open momentary push button, and a PCB board which I drilled holes in and mounted the button and the camera onto. You can remove the plate inside the box and this is where we will mount our Raspberry Pi and our button and our camera. I installed two breather plugs on this box and those are good to prevent condensation from building up and damaging your electronics. They also equalize pressure during uh, temperature changes within the box and it allows some airflow while at the same time keeping out dust and water so that's good. When it shuts we can latch it. It's actually pretty firm. I like this. It's pretty good and it's easy to drill through. In case you're wondering, I was wondering, and uh, drill through it pretty easily. In fact, I drilled a hole in the bottom here. In that hole is where the power cord will go. This is my power cord that I'm going to use for the Raspberry Pi. This little skinny guy. Normally you'd have a thicker cord probably to go through there. And you put this little plug in there and it is waterproof. Unscrew the end of it here. It's got a gasket on there. You just uh, attach the gasket side on the outside, screw that in, make sure it's snug. And then you can see here that this part shrinks and gets smaller as you twist this tighter. But it doesn't get small enough to accommodate this cord here. There's still a lot of room. So there's going to be an opening. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do, I bought some waterproof heat shrinking tube waterproof heat shrink tubing there we go and I'm going to heat shrink this uh, once I connect the power supply here and I'm going to push that in there and then just fasten that snugly and that'll create a seal it'll be good I also wanted to say this tubing right here hardens up like hard plastic it's really it's great here it is that's what I got real thick tubing. I wasn't expecting it to harden up so much. It's three quarter. Yeah, it's great. Look at that. Obviously it's too big for these little cords down here, but I just squeezed it together, melted it. It's all sealed up. It's great. And this end will be connected to the Raspberry Pi Zero. And that's how I get my power. All right, now I want to show you my power supply. I've got, I've had this waterproof power supply for quite a while, probably about four years. It is a uh, IP67. I've had it before. I've used it outside before. I've got this on the end of it. I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to attach this 12 volt power supply to this 5 volt converter. I just connected it to this. We'll see how it does. So, yeah, 5 volt, 5 amp. You want at least, I think, 3 amp for the Raspberry Pi Zero 2. Um, yeah, so that's what I got so far. During the install and setup here, anytime you see my information, replace it with your own so you don't have any issues. We're going to start out with updating the system. Then we're going to install a whole bunch of libraries that we need for computer vision, camera support, and general development. We're also going to install YOLO using the Ultralytics package, which is the official way, plus all the main dependencies you need for computer vision and AI projects. Once you create your directories, you want to make sure that your Python code is in the correct file path. For me, that's home, bmonster, and birdcam, and here it is right here. We'll go ahead and open it up and take a look at it. The code that I'm using has a button for safe shutdown, so you just don't turn it off and uh, risk corrupting the SD card. It also detects motion continuously and identifies birds using YOLO V5. And it takes a photo only if a bird is detected, and that's limited to one picture every four minutes. That way it prevents spamming. 
It also has daytime only operation from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. when birds are out, and it sends a push notification using Notify when starting up in the morning at 5 a.m. It also sends one when shutting down at 9 p.m., and at 9 p.m. it also disables the camera for the night, and we also get the pictures of the birds through the push notification as well. It also keeps track of the uh, CPU temperature and it sends alerts if overheated. Be sure to make that Python file an executable so you can run it directly as a program. Next, we're going to create a system service so that our bird camera script runs automatically at boot and it runs in the background and restarts if it's unplugged. Basically, it makes your bird camera project act like a built-in system service so there's no need to start it manually. Once you're done with that, go ahead and save and exit with Control o Enter, then Control x Use these commands to activate and launch your bird camera service so that it runs automatically and immediately and reboot if you need to. I just got a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and I was excited to use it. So I want to show you my first go around here with this uh, Pi Zero 2W. Now it worked okay when I tested it inside the house, but I'm going to take it outside about 50 feet away from the router right outside the window and mount it on the fence. We'll see how it does. If it fails, we will go with our old standby Raspberry Pi 4. I'm not using it, so it makes sense to use something like this because I know it can handle the job. This is the inside of my bird feeder camera setup, the inside of the box. I bought a waterproof box, and this will be in there taking pictures as cute little birds come and, and feed on the feeder, right? So I'm using a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And it is running 32-bit uh, Bookworm Raspberry Pi OS, which it does pretty well with. I didn't do 64. That's kind of overkill for this. But um, you could go with a light, which is even uh, easier on the processor. I'm using an older camera. I'm using uh, 1080p, 5 megapixel. I've had this camera in several videos before. I've had it for quite a while. I just want to see how it does. I may find that I need to upgrade to an 8 megapixel or my 16 megapixel camera. And uh, they're, they have a little, the images are a little bit better. I've also included a button on here. This is for a safe shutdown so that you know, I don't corrupt my SD card. It's not taking an image or recording a picture when I'm, uh, when I'm shutting it down. I just don't want to yank the plug out, right? There we go. Got it done. Inside is all fixed up and ready to go got the bracket screwed on the back got this thing waterproofed and plugged in and of course that goes to the converter here 5 volts to the Raspberry Pi Zero and then 12 volts coming from my 12 volt supply right here so now I just gotta test it out we're out here in the garage and here's the bird feeder six dollar bird feeder from Dollar General I hope the bird food adds some weight to it it is very light and the Dollar General no waste blend bird food Well, here we are. We've got the waterproof box mounted on the back side of my fence with the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. And here's the bird feeder, totally full. What bird would not want to come here and eat this? I don't know. But uh, this is really a bad spot. It doesn't get as much sunlight. And I don't know if the birds really notice it back here. But I do have it powered up by extension cord coming from the house. I'm about 50 feet or so away from the router. The signal says OK, not great. It says OK, so we are connected to Wi-Fi. And I just want to show you the results from this setup. Here are the images that I got from the app on my cell phone. And it's kind of overload because the camera would snap a picture every time the bird feeder moved. And it's windy outside, so we need to fix that. But I just wanted to show you all of the bird feeder pictures with no bird. Um, I think it was something like 97 pictures. But, yeah, isn't that crazy? So I had to stop it. <laughs> it's just one right after another. And I have it set for every 30 seconds. Um, it'll look for motion and snap a picture. So, yeah, we're going to have to fix that. Since the Raspberry Pi Zero didn't work, I switched out that for the Raspberry Pi 4. And I switched out the camera for the Articam 8 megapixel, which takes a little bit better of a picture. 
The box is going to be more crowded now because the Pi 4 is about twice the size of the Pi Zero, but this does work much better. So I changed the location of the bird feeder, I changed to a Pi 4, and I'm using different code. I'm no longer taking pictures every 30 seconds. There's a four minute delay, which is very helpful. And this does very well until the sun starts beating on the box and it gets very hot very fast and I have to shut it down around 10 o'clock in the morning. But I find that if I turn it back on around 5, it can go to about 9 without any problems. It's just the middle of the day, it gets very hot. This was surprisingly a very fun project and I want to find a way to keep the temperature down because I want to keep this going. I was also surprised at how many and how fast the birds came to the bird feeder. The code is pretty long, so if you're on my email list, you'll receive a copy of the code and all the commands I use so that you can tweak it and make it your own. Be sure to let me know what you think about this project or if you're going to try it yourself. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And check out that video if you enjoyed this one. And I'll see you again very soon with another video.